Armed with a tiny vacuum and a filter, scientist Christine Bowman is gathering data at the Copenhagen Zoo. She's trying to find out which animals are kept there, not by wandering the enclosures, but from the air. What we found was that we can not only detect the animals that are kept here at the zoo, we could also detect even species that are used to feed the animals here in the zoo. They're using what's called environmental DNA. It's been used before to work out the kinds of fish or plants living in water. But these scientists in Denmark and the UK have worked out how to capture eDNA from thin air. Their filters catching microscopic pieces of fur, saliva and feces. Wildlife is difficult to monitor, but if you look for a giraffe in an open savanna, that's fairly easy. But if you look for something like a tapir like this, not in a, in a pen like this, but in dense rainforest, it's immensely difficult. If this works in a greater scale, it'll revolutionize the way we look at rainforest animals. The teams worked in zoos because it made it easier to confirm the source of the DNA and how far it had traveled. They identified dozens of species, including meerkats living 245 meters away. The researchers think it will be useful in the field to help track and conserve wildlife. There are two. It's a small one. Until now, scientists have had to rely on the signs animals leave behind. Travelling to remote areas using camera traps to snap pictures of hard-to-find creatures. The wonderful thing about environmental DNA is almost every other biomonitoring method we have requires that the animal be present when you're assessing them. So if you're using a camera trap, they have to walk in front of the camera. If they walk behind it, you'll never see them. The great thing about environmental DNA is it's more like a footprint. They leave it behind. It's early days for the researchers who don't know why some animal DNA wasn't detected, even though they were in the zoo. And it's unclear what impact the weather could have on collecting the data. But the scientists hope the answers to some of the toughest questions in conservation could just be hanging in the air. Alexia O'Brien, Al Jazeera, 